Yeah. I put it up and tagged you on it. Oh, and Jesus. I put it up and tagged you on it. Derek O M Jesus. What Derek? What up, Derek? Tamara, you are there. Good gracious. Hey Tamara. I know, I'm gonna bring you in, man. Ryan, I got a coaching client that I need to bring her in. Well, you know what? I ain't gonna put you on the spot, Tamara. You can if you want to, man. It's Christmas time. I don't know what your time's looking like. I just had my 130 canceled, so I got some extra time. I am hanging out with my brother, dude. I might not see you for another year. I wish my class, this person, I don't even, <laughs> we don't even. I've probably talked to you over the last two months more than I've talked to you in the last 20 years. It is so sad, but we're not going to rest our mind on the negative aspect of it, but we're moving forward. I just love to just wrap my mind around it. It's, it's how things can change overnight. It did happen overnight. And I have a lot of Chris Haskins to thank for that. Thank you for caring enough about your older brother to want to hang out with me, man. <laughs> you know what's weird, man? I've been doing a lot of research about the market, you know, class. We're going to give you guys a few more minutes. I've been researching the market, Ronnie. And if you're on the internet, if you're not, using the tools on the internet i really in my opinion you're going to be out of business soon i've been watching your paradigm shift as i watch your videos with eddie and even you you're like text messaging and that's so funny you had that video the other day because i was just approached about text messaging and in my mind i'm like i don't want to bug my customers i don't want to but i got to start at least opening my mind to it to look at it to to see how i can use it you know right. you're driving down the street all i see is this yeah. Drive I promise you, when I go to the bathroom, people are taking a shit, dude. Or taking a they, they, you're, they're at the toilet stalls, Ronnie. <laughs> Looking at their phone. Has have you ever seen that? Yes. You can't get people to answer emails for the most part, but they always look at their text mess messages. Dude, if you're not in this, if you're not on this, God, that just you know, my whole outlook on things, man. If you're not on this phone, dude, you're gonna be out of business, man. And I, I'm, as I'm walking around town, sometimes I'm a looker, right? I'll just go to Walmart and just hang out on, at the bench. When I go to Target, people shop and they're pushing their carts, Ronnie. You know, I mean, it's just. I know. I was, I'm like, you're walking and texting. You're walking and texting. Watch out. <laughs> I really think that it's coming, man, you know. You know what it's really going to go to, Chris? It's going to go to implants. It's, well, you're you're going to bypass the Google Glass and go right to implants. So you're just walking around and you can just see it scrolling up your eye. Oh man, that's nasty. Yeah, that's not in our lifetime, but it's gonna happen. Anyway, well today, hey class, greetings class. Let me see who's here real quick. Make sure I got my live thing on. Hey, Tamara, Roberto, what up, what up, what up, what up? Talox, hey, and Andre, hey, what's up? Good morning, good morning. Ronnie, thank you for your time. My name, if you do not know me, is Chris Haskins. My ministry, my mission is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Today, Fridays, I get to hang out with my brother. Ronnie Haskins has been in the automotive business and a car dealer since the late 1990s. He knows a little bit about business and staying in business. What's up, my brother? What's up, Christopher Haskins? How you doing, class? Yeah, I'm happy to be here today. It's the holiday season. It's Christmas time. And I just want, I got some specific questions for you today about how you uh, handle and find the secrets to your business through all the hard work you put in. So I'm in the class today too, because I, I, I can't wait to hear you drop some knowledge today. Yeah, me too. I've learned so much. Every time I talk to you, it's like stuff I don't think about. Class, if you want us, I got to give you some quick commercials, shout outs. Tonight, we're doing a master class on text message marketing with Eddie. If you want to join that class, I will put a link in the bottom in the description as my brother's talking. <laughs> I didn't put it in there yet. If you want to join us for that class, it is a paid class tonight. Uh, Eddie is going to be holding that how to locate sellers with text marketing, text message marketing. 
And tomorrow I'm going to be doing a live event at one of my flips. So I'll put my email address in the description. Also, if you want to come to one of our flips, you can see how we get down with construction. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, Ronnie. So we're talking about the secrets in the work, the secrets in the work. You came to this epiphany last night as we were talking. There's one thing I like to, to hang out with professional people. I get to borrow your ideas. I don't care about borrowing anything from you right now, but your ideas. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the magic is. Everybody thinks it's all about the money, but it's all about the, the ideas. So you came to this epiphany. What were you, you want to discuss what you were doing at the time and you're trying to mold Jude or you want to move forward to the business aspect of it? No, I can talk to you. It, it was, I was sitting with my son, Jude, and we were working on his sixth grade math. And I can just try to paint this picture for you. It was basically uh, multiplication of fractions. So, you know, you have one and one eighth times five and six eighths. That equals a number. And so he was filling in a riddle, right? So every uh, 10 equations, each equation gives you a number. That number associates in the legend of the test with a letter. So you take the number 28 and you go, oh, that's an A. And then you put that in the blank spot. And it spelled out the answer to the riddle. Well, halfway through the riddle, Jude is like, oh, dad, I think I can guess the answer. And then I'm like, yeah, you probably can. But the magic is in doing the actual equations. That's where the, the learning is. And that's where all the secrets are. So when I saw him doing that, I was like, man, yeah, you can guess through life. You can just guess and pick it up and borrow from this person or emulate LeBron James on the court. But you can't get as good as LeBron James without putting in the work. So that equation that you was working out, that particular one wasn't the most challenging. Correct. But if you were to apply the actual steps to the more challenge, are you saying that, that when the problems get more challenging, you have to have the same steps to find the answers? You will learn the fundamentals. Like for you, let's use an example of all the people in your class talking about costs when it comes to repairs. You, I've seen you do videos on cost of repairs. Well, you can read a book on how much wood is going to cost you. Oh, shit. You know, you can you can watch one of your videos. You know, you can do these little things, but nothing is better than when you walk into a house and you can visualize, oh my goodness, it needs this much wood. That's going to be about $500. This is about $600. And you can do the equations in your mind before you even have to go even think about making money on the property. The only way you can get that knowledge and get those secrets, like when you're looking around a room at how much it's going to cost you is by putting in the work showing up at the houses. Does that make any more sense? Yeah, you know, there's a big push in my industry, Ronnie, something called virtual investing, where people, they don't even want to leave their living room, Ronnie. They're trying to estimate repairs. And I'm not mad at it, but they are doing stuff online now. And I'm like, dude, you're going to lose your shirt. You write a check for $100,000. You think you're going to know what these repairs are? I think that's why this class is so important to me. It's very, very difficult right now for me to articulate it. But what you're talking about is where society is moving. So if you're in this class, you want to become an investor, you want to be a car guy like me, trust me, you need to learn the, the hard lessons, the mundane things. And then later on, like I hear Chris say this, he goes, yeah, uh, duplexes are great. I don't have a lot of them, but I'm moving in that direction. There's a reason why he's not in duplexes right now, because he is mastering A and then moving to B, you know, and then eventually you get to the point where you're like, yeah, here's 100 grand. I know you. I know all the numbers. I got it right here. That's going to make me thirty five thousand dollars. You're right. You're right. You, you don't wake up. You don't wake up with that one, Ronnie. I, you know, man, it's so weird how when we talk to each other, we are this person now. But you know, 15 years ago, I don't want, you know, any, I don't want anyone to think that I learned this stuff overnight. You know, or even for you, it's like the so many of the skills that we have developed has taken. I mean, good God, I mean, 15,000 hours of putting in the work. I'll, I'll give you another example, bro. So I get people that are like, oh. They'll, they'll get their tax return and they're like, I'm going to go buy a car and flip it. I'm like, and they'll call me and be like, man, I'm looking at this Ford diesel. 
it's only fifteen thousand dollars, and I'm like, is it a six liter Ford? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> well, is it, what is a six liter Ford? The kiss of death in my industry. So Ford went through like 06, <clears throat> 2011. They they had the Power Stroke diesel 7.3, which everybody loved. Rock solid, lasts for a million miles. They came out with the six liter because they all went to quieter diesels. And they were horrible. They had injector problems. They had all of these themes. On paper class, if I were to show you the numbers and be like, hey, you can buy this diesel for this much money, you'd be like, oh my goodness, I'm in. And I'm like, you just lost five thousand dollars. <laughs> oh wow. It's so the easy. Only, you know? The only way you're gonna know that is from being around. Being around, doing the work, talking to people, uh, and becoming a master of your niche, which takes everyday work, you know, like they it's a fireable offense in some communities and some jobs where you don't know what your competition is doing. You're not looking at what else is going on in the marketplace. You're just keeping your blinders on. Um, you got to keep that brain open, man. You got to always be thinking about what you can do. For me right now, it's text messaging. I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to look at that. You know? But you're you talking about mad stuff, or you you talking about just text messaging for business in general? I'm talking about like I have already been approached for like a couple of years now about spending money on text messaging. You buy a car for me, right? Four weeks later, and you know, I can't get you on the phone. It's hard to get people on the phone nowadays. Hey, I need to talk to you or whatever, but I can automatically send you a text message that says, Chris, your title work is complete. Go to the DMV and pay for your license plates. You know, there's all kinds of applications. So I am like, I I need to start. I was a little closed minded, and I think I need to open my mind to looking at it a little bit deeper. You know, I hate technology. I freaking hate it, man. I mean, I want to just be the guy. Sending out my letters, buying houses, but technology doesn't care whether I like it or not. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if you like it. You can still be a hater of technology. But you, if you're going to be in business, what is your client? What are your clients doing? You're right. <laughs> I only want to work with people that hate technology. Good luck, bro. You have mom, dad. <laughs> but let me move on, though. I did a, a consultation yesterday with a client out in San Francisco, northern, close to Sacramento. He doesn't have a social media page. And we were discussing how he was going to meet a uh, meet a mate, you know, even going on dating. I'm like, dude, I don't even know. Do I mean, do you even everybody meets everybody online now? Right. I don't even know. I'll give you a better comp. Uh, uh, well, not a better. I'll give you another one. <coughs> I, have a, I had a guy call me because I'm hiring right now. And so I had a guy call me and he's like, hey. I'm ready to get out of the, the regular car business and become a broker. And I'm like, okay, how are you going to market yourself? Do you have a good social following? I, I don't like doing Facebook. Do you have LinkedIn? Oh, no. I like LinkedIn. I'm like, so are you planning on knocking on door to door in the whole neighborhood? You could. You could do that. You could get killed. <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think what we're saying here with regards to technology is like whether you like it or not, it's happening. You know, and you and think about it, Chris. It doesn't mean you have to love it. You don't have to love it. I don't. But you know, I think that's going to be another. That segues into our topic for the day: work. I have learned. If you were to look at me a year ago, I you know I've just been doing YouTube for about a year. I have learned so much just from pounding out videos every week, cranking out crap. People emailing me. I would have never known this stuff if we were to start doing YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that you know I got I wrote a couple of things down that we can talk about, but I'm hoping people really it's a tough title, you know, the secrets to the business are in the work. I mean, but I'm hoping to share with them a little bit of things today that you know you can get used to it. Go, oh, yeah, hit it. You got a bullet, I got one, or I got some stuff in my head, or you can shoot it. Go ahead and get rolling, brother. So the first thing I want to share with you guys today is the programming of your mind. You know, in you have to have a successful mindset in order to truly be successful. And when I started out and it was very difficult, I didn't have any customers, I didn't have any clients, you know, I had to program my brain to teach myself that I was gonna be a winner, I'm gonna win. And you may find it a little hokey or mystical or mythical, but try it for a week. Every time you're brushing your teeth, when you're looking in the mirror, I'm gonna win today. It's going to be a great day. You know, like before you walk out of the door to get in your car, 
tell yourself it's going to be a great day. And then you start applying that to, you know, in Chris's business and you guys that are looking at real estate investing, how many phone calls you're making, how many things you're doing. And you still have that mindset of it's going to, man, it's going to be a great day. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm blessed. You know, like you just keep doing that every day for as long as you can. And then one day the magic happens. You believe it. <laughs> and that's that's really all that has to happen for you to be uh, somewhat successful is you first have to believe. Period. You know, what helps me to keep a um, positive mindset is gratitude, brother. When I wake up and I, I meet so many people, I was oh man, yeah, I was talking to a coaching client on Tuesday. We had a seller call us 11 o'clock at night, stressed out over financing. She moved on to the afterlife overnight before we could even put the deal together. Right? Tell me about that. So tell me that story. Well, I don't know. That, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to put the pieces together on how we can help her. I'm going to go visit the family. They. I don't know the whole story, man. I'm still trying to put it all together. But I, I, my point is, I don't. They call you know over stressful over that. I, I know I know sellers that have hanged themselves over credit card debt. And I remember I had one seller that had a flesh eating bacteria that passed away. It's like, man, I am just so thankful. I tell my wife all the time, listen, we don't have cancer, we don't have diverticulosis in our stomachs we don't we know we can digest our food we can see we can hear we can taste our food there's so many little things to me it helps me to have gratitude which is like you know once i'm thankful for the little stuff the big stuff man just rolls on class our father was here for thanksgiving ron haskins senior and he's like how you doing today son i'm like fantastic and so he's he's like he even stopped me chris he's like how is it that you can always be doing fantastic? <laughs> and I said, because my kids are healthy and they woke up this morning. So, you know, I never said, because I got all the money I want, because <coughs> I'm driving the car I want to drive, because I have the house I want, because I'm going on vacation. No, you have to be grateful that your kids are awake and little breathing stuff. air. Little stuff. Yeah, little stuff. Well, that helps. As your, well, your point you were making is, convincing yourself yes that you're gonna be a winner and i start i just start with gratitude you know i woke up because i i don't know about you but i've woke i've wake wake i've woken up in the morning and have some pain brother they come keep me in the bed and i'm like shit i woke up i don't have no pain today i'm good is that a good one <laughs> that's fantastic man i don't really deal with the pain issues but I hear it a lot like back pain can be debilitating. So I thought you hurt your hip or something recently. No, nah, that was like ten like seven years ago until I started using a chiropractor. And I and then I started working out again. That really helped. That's right. That's right. All right. What's the next? Well, so like I I really want to ask you this question when I'm thinking about this, because I want to know how your brain works on this. So when you're thinking about the secrets, can you share with us a secret you learn? just by doing the work over and over and over again in a practical application for your class. So like when you're, when you're talking about, let's just say uh, selecting a property to um, make an offer on. Well, I was thinking about that. Yeah, I'll talk about that, the property. And, you know, I don't want people to think that real estate is about houses. I don't want to sound like I'm a weirdo because I'm doing this shit every day. But real estate is about pe sellers. You know, I mean, the house is secondary. It's more about the seller. You know, you got a seller that's doing good, on time, on payments, got a bunch of equity. They're not your client. So the house is one thing, yes. But I know I want the, the, type, the type of house I want, and it changes over time. We don't even buy two-bedroom houses. You know, I'm not even looking at that. We buy three-bedroom three houses <coughs> that we can convert it into four or we'll tear a roof off. But yes, the, house that, the houses that we're looking at, I know exactly what I want to do to them when I walk in. But I remember back in the day when I would walk into it, I'm like, man, I don't know what the hell. How can we make this house better? What do we need to do to make this house? They call it expandability. And that came with, man, five years of looking at crap houses, bro. Well, hold on a second, Chris. So nobody wants to do, remember, nobody wants to do the work. They want to go from point A to Z. But you are talking about something specific. How, all the houses you looked at that were crap, all the work you put in, 
helped you realize that you only wanted to look at three bedroom expandable to four. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the oh, skills yeah. you learned by looking at a thousand houses or people or yeah. whatever the situation is. So that's what, share that. Like, when did you finally realize, oh my goodness, this is what I want to focus on after how many houses did you fail at and yeah. this ain't going to work out? You know what I mean? Am I making sense? Yeah, I got you. So yeah, I found out after flipping, I don't know how many houses. I mean, I, I can't even, they all, it's just like a long, it's like cars with you. I'm sure it's just one car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah, whatever. It's a piece of metal with some paint on it. <laughs> Somebody come you know, they'll be like, you remember that house and blah, 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 blah. I'm like. <laughs> I like what you say. You're like, yeah, I remember it. It had four walls and some broken windows. <laughs> <laughs> it had four walls and a roof. <laughs> Man, shoot. Well, yeah, I, it clicked on me. I remember the day I held on to a house after doing a lot of houses. We used to do three bedrooms, one bath. Yeah. Back in the day. And I'm like, you know, I'm the man, right? You don't know how stupid you are until the market changes or Mr. Market will tell you, you ain't, you know what? Come here, kid. Let me show you something. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> happened to me. I've gone through a few of them. We got one coming up. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Market told me, yeah, if you do another three bedroom, one bathroom, son, I'm going to hand you your shirt. So I used to do three ones, right? I was the man walking around town selling houses. Then all of a sudden, no one wanted one bathroom houses. No, they want their kids to use their own damn bathroom. Yeah, I don't even want Yeah, I'm done. I don't want to so be I'm, in my kid's bathroom. No. <laughs> but what happened to me was I held on to a house, Ryan, for 14 months, paying interest. People stole my central heating and air units. People broke my windows. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to lose money. Wow. I'm gonna lose money. But that just came with time. Look, doing doing so many of them. And then that market shift. And I'm like, you know what? No more. Never again will you see me in a one bathroom house ever. That's what I'm talking about. The secrets you learn <laughs> to success only happen because you kept putting in the work. Yeah. I I'll share one with you. So like yeah. I'm in Colorado Springs. The auction is an hour away. The physical auction is an hour away. 15 years ago, I would be like, Chris, I'm going to go look at your car. I'm going to smell it. I'm going to taste it. I'm going to touch it. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to call you and let you know that um, the car's okay, and then I'm going to buy it for you, right? So I thought that was great customer service. It, you know, I still believe that's great customer service. But as time moved on, I'm like, man, I'm going to die on this highway. I was on that road every day, Chris. And then, then I had an epiphany after doing that a thousand times. I was like, you know what? I have mechanics at the auction. I have detailers at the auction. I have people that are getting in the car at the auction. Why am I driving there? Why am I spending my time? Because I wanted to deliver good services. But what I found out was I could do more. I could do five or six of them if I just let other people do their job and I trusted them to do it. I couldn't figure that out until I went through it so many times where I was like, I'm just sick of walking in here at 7.30 in the morning Driving by an accident, car flipped over. I'm like, I'm gonna die on the one day. Well, you so, kind of knew doing that told you that you didn't want to do it, or told you that you understood it enough to communicate with the people that are doing it. Because it, I mean, that, obviously, you couldn't communicate it if you don't know what the hell you're looking for. Well, I have a team looking at it. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm getting your car looked at. The bottom line is, once the car goes through every, all of my people and then gets to me, then I touch it. And if it's bad, I'm just not gonna give it to you. You know what I mean? I couldn't, there was a mental block. I was like, I don't want to buy the car unless it's perfect. And I am the only one that can tell you it's perfect. Mm -hmm. I had to go through that so many times till I realized, okay, these guys are good. And then I'm going to look at it finally. And then I'm going to give it to John. <coughs> if it's bad. I'll either fix it or tell John we're moving to a different, moving a different direction. And then so I could do multiple units at a time. I could start to do five and six at a time. Yeah, so, I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, I'm asking you what. So, what did that do? How much time was freed up from you doing that? How much time did you free up? Well, you know, in essence, driving up there took an hour and a half each way, so three hours, dude. Probably like ten hours a week, man. Wow. Like maybe even probably more. You know, ten to fifteen hours a week that I wow. freed up. Holy cow! Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, man. I mean, it, but I only learned that by doing the work. 
How long did it take you to come to that realization? Years, way too long. <laughs> you know, class, write your things down. Try to listen to other people. Keep your mind open. Uh, my mentor was telling me, why you keep driving up there? For like two years before I decided to stop. And then I had an epiphany. Like you can the feel it. Like the drunk money man a asked you. Moment of clarity, you know? The money man asked you why you're driving up there. He did. He's like, dude, I never go there. I'm like, well, I do a better job for my customers than you do. <laughs> yeah, but I'm doing six. I'm doing six today. You're doing one. I'm like, I want to do a better job. I want, I have to do it my way. And I was like, oh, my Lord. So dude, when I had that epiphany, dude, good. you know what? You know what helped me with that epiphany was my team members. They were like, is the car good? I need to drive up. There. I'm like, you don't need to drive up there. <laughs> I'm going to make sure the car's fine. You know, and then, oh, dude. But I wouldn't have come to that conclusion without working it every day. You know, you can't skip to the riches. You've got to work, man. So, class, I wanted to mention something about my renovations real quick. Class, questions, comments you want us to discuss on here, throw them in the box there with your name and your city so we know where the hell you are in the world. Ronnie, I was the same way. I'm like, my rehab, I used to go in other people's rehabs. I'm like, my rehab is better than this one. My, re my renovation is better. <laughs> Little did I know that my dumb behind was over renovating a house. Yes. You know, the base. Can you see? You see this right here? Absolutely. This is called uh, door casing. Yeah. This is real wood here. You don't. You don't want to. Yeah. This is. They got cheaper stuff you can use, but I would go in and rip out all the casing in the house, brother. And I'm is like, I'm back, giving my huh? Is this back when you were like Ronnie? We got speakers in the ceilings. We got speakers in the walls. <laughs> I was over it, over it, baby. So I'm ripping out the casing, right? Spending another three thousand, and I go with my competition, and I'm like, man, they got old casing in here. Yeah. Little did I know that I was getting zero dollar return for putting in new casing. Because what's in it for me as the buyer? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know what a casing was until you just told me that just now. And I didn't know even, what it was. <laughs> with the paint, once you paint it, you it's, don't even know it's fifty <laughs> years old. You know? <laughs> Anyway, the stuff you learn, I think your topic is so remarkable because the only way I would have known is from doing it over and over. We used to go in and rip out all the cases. I'm like, all right, fellas, let's roll. Case and gone. Thousands. Thousands. If we're talking about business stuff, you can apply this stuff to your life. I mean, you, you know, if you want to be have a successful mindset, <laughs> your work starts with your making your bed schedule like for this week your goal for next week is all seven days i'm gonna make my bed have my teeth brushed be ready to go to the gym at 7 a.m little successes little success and then and then sit back and go man I, I i did that you know and then until you're just you're doing it automatically and you don't even realize it well so do you have any little things that you are focusing on trying to trying to accomplish at this moment yes so you know i'm working i'm setting my goals right now for 2019 I'm, I'm contemplating exactly where I want my business to go. Um, and part of that is my YouTube channel, my the technology that you're talking about. I'm looking at technology as well, um, hiring people. So I have been unsuccessful at good hiring for the last 18 years, 18 years. And so I am hell bent on, you know, I, you know what I thought about? I'm just going to give up. I'm just going, I'm, I don't know. Anybody do it better than me. I'm not going to have that attitude. I am going to fight through this. I am going to take like baby steps. Me. And we're going to do a video sometime in 19. I'm going to be like, okay, I've gotten this far, you know? Yes, I am setting goals for 19 to try and see if I can set some new habits. You know what, man? I went to a, a training seminar a few weeks ago, and the man was saying how he hires people from a local staffing agency to do, to do stuff. Which I is never thought about that. Exactly right. And VAs, like I am hell bent on having at least one VA in 2019. There you go. Good for you, man. That's a baby step. I mean, the baby step is the, is the, dude, the baby steps is the key for my, for my YouTube. I'm like, dude, if I could just do one video a week, I know people that put out a video a day. Wow. It doesn't yeah. really equate to success though. I mean, quality over quantity. I mean, you know. Well, it depends on, yeah. I mean, everybody's threshold is different. But if I mean, the guy I'm referring to, he's 
uh, doing a lot of consultations. So it was just recording consultations, phone calls. Uh, it's not a like thing, yeah. Okay. But um, I, I'm just saying, we are here today, Ronnie, because I started doing that one week thing. Is like, and my boy was like, Chris, either you're persistent or you're non-existent. Well, Chris, listen, man, I think that we got our work ethic from our father and our mother, you know, and that's why when you got into the music industry, you were consistent and we have that. Right. And yeah. so but that leads to I was watching this video on Facebook, guys. I'll try to post the link in the comments if I can, if it'll let me. But it was like when you're your first seven years of your life, you're programmed. And we've been talking about like how your brain thinks about money. The good news is if you have a mentality that doesn't think about money well or business well, or you can't set good habits, here's the good news. You can change that through repetition, repetition. I call it eating your vegetables, man. You know, when people are like, for me, it's like, oh man, I need to, I need to make a few cold calls this week to meet some new people. I just like, I try to get it done early. Like I get it done at 10 a.m. And then I go, okay, great. That's over with. I've eaten my vegetables. Now I can go ahead and eat the fried chicken. <laughs> that was probably a bad right. analogy. We've been yapping for 30 minutes. Let's see what we got. If we have any questions here on our slideshow here. Class, thank you for joining me and my brother. I don't think we have any questions today or maybe comments. Derek. Roberto, Andre, what's up, Andre? Pole, hey, Forever Noble's back. You got a picture now. What up, Forever Noble? Rosanna, hey, 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 Shirley, checking in from the West Texas. Chris, programming down the fish, programming your mind. Yes, Nick, I think you're down in Texas too. You're thankful for your help. I like that. Great points, Daniel. Learning something new today. Good for you, brother. Well, the good thing about my brother, I was thinking about you this morning, Ronnie. I'm like, I'm not saying, I think every man needs a failure early. Walt Disney was like, man, I think every man needs to fail so he can get forward quickly. I'm just thinking about you. I always think about when I was in college, I think about you being in college and it was like, man, you left school and then you just took off. It just wasn't for, it's not for everybody, you know? Is that what you saw? Well, I don't know. I mean, all I, yeah, when, when I, when I, when you left Norfolk State, <clears throat> all I remember is, you know, the report card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a failure. I didn't even get an F class. I got I's. The teacher was like, <laughs> Ronnie, who? <laughs> who said that? They didn't even know who I was, man. I mean, like, if I was in the class in the front row, they would have been like, I have no idea who this guy is. <laughs> I went so little to class. I mean, class, they sent me to school at the beach <laughs> and gave me an allowance. Oh my at 17, lord. At 17 years old. Unreal. It was not gonna work out. <laughs> but I think that really catapulted you though. What were you thinking when you left there? What was your mindset as you were leaving Norfolk? I cannot attribute any business 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 success to my mindset at that point in time. My mindset was I was listening to Public Enemy. It took a nation of millions to hold us back, you know, a fear of a black planet. And I'm like, look, I, me and Dad were not getting along, so I was like, I want to do. What would Dad be pissed off at? Oh, okay, I'm gonna join the army. I am not gonna be the first Haskins to finish college. I'm going into the army. Little did I know, that's when my success has started, was the think about what we were just talking about today. I had to be on time. I had to shine my shoes. I had to go to formation. I had to do PT every day. I had to do all of this stuff repetitively until I, I mastered it. I was a really good soldier. Gotcha. So that it didn't change until you did that. Exactly. That's cool, man. So, you know, well, still, man, I'm like, uh, I look at my failures. I'm not, I don't, I don't know what you consider a failure, but a lot, of, a lot of the failures that I've had, I've been fired from jobs. I've been fired about seven times. You know, people call me in the office. It's just like, you know what? Thank you for your <laughs> time. Nice knowing you. Wow. That's has, I call it a failures, but when I look back, it just made me 
bulletproof to getting fired. I just didn't care. Yeah. Like, um, you fire me? All right, we'll go look for work now. We got to go look for another, another gig. You know, it was like, uh, and then it kind of went over to sales. You're saying no? Okay, nice meeting you. I'm going to see you want, go to the next person to see if they're going to buy. Right. That's another topic I want to talk about. Like some of the worst jobs we had that led to success for me. Did you remember I sold vacuum cleaners door to door? That wasn't no, the worst one, no, Chris. The worst one is I sold perfume. Was it and, Mary Kay? Nah, man. They would take us. They had this knockoff. Like we got Dracar. We got this. We got this. They would give me all these bottles, and they were like, "Get in the van." And so I would get in the van, look like a daggone criminal van, right? They drive us to the front of the mall. You know, you remember what a mall is, guys? Like I, I don't go to the mall anymore. But they drop me off and go. Go sell your product. So I'd be walking around the mall going, hey, Chris, what kind of cologne do you like? You <laughs> might get was, beat the head now. They could kill you. <laughs> it was crazy, man. But So we'll talk about that. We'll do jobs, past jobs, because I got a whole bunch of them that have made me who I am today. That was the worst. <laughs> All right, we got one. How do you talox? I don't know. I don't know to say if that's your name, ta talox. How do you balance a full-time corporate job and real estate wholesaling on the side? How do you balance? That's an excellent question. Wow. Talox, I want to be honest with you. I have never had to do that. I do not know. I'm not going to perpetrate that I know how to work nine or 10 hours a day at a corporate office and run a successful business. I, I, I mean, I can give you some knowledge on it, but I, I'll have to think about that one, man, because I, well, I've always been full time. Ryan, you got anything for people that work full time and they want to? It's very difficult one for me as well. I, you know, in my mind, I think you could work nine to five. And <laughs> once, you, once again, back to what we're talking about today. If you set goals and your goal is to get better at being a real estate investor and your job is funding it. Hell, Damon John did that. He worked at Red Lobster while he was building FUBU. So I guess to give you an idea, I would go get The Power Broke by Damon John. I would look into people that did it that way. But Chris and I, I mean, I was just 100 percent. I I'm I struggle with that one. I'm like, I don't know if you can really. I don't you can do it because people have done it, but I don't really have a blueprint for you to do it. So yeah. I would look at authors like Damon John. I'm sorry, yeah, Ronnie. That oh man, t I think Talox, you have a phenomenal topic, and I think that's probably the majority of our viewers in general. Yes, and I did a whole video training on it. Let me see if I can find it. If you go through my channel, go through. Uh, I interviewed a wholesaler that works at the Newport News shipyard here in Newport News. He works full time and he does wholesaling. And what he told me was, he sets all his home appointments up after five when he gets off work. So his quote was, he had a quote that he told me, Talix, I'm just going to relate to you. It's not mine. He says, you have to work as hard on your five to nine that you do on your nine to five. I'll repeat that. You got to work as hard as you do on your nine to five that you want to do for your five to nine. So those three hours you have or four hours when you get off, you're going to have to put eight hours of work into those three, you know, so. If you're willing to do that, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, this dude is doing it. It can be done. It can be done. You see the Sam, next. What up, Sam? Anything else? I don't see too many questions today. Questions I got today. A, that's a good question right here by um, T. B. Williams. Oh yeah, she's a client. You got Al Gordon first. You don't skip Al. Oh, I missed that one. He's right below. Um, I see it. Merry Christmas class. Any questions you got, put them in a box for me and my brother to see what other, what, uh, whatever words of wisdom from him being in the business since 1990s, he can drop on you. So Al, you're thinking about doing a real estate deal in Detroit, purchasing a rental property while you stay in, I'm assuming that's LA, Cal so California. Yeah. Um, I mean, my the first thing that comes to my mind is read the question, Ron. I didn't see, I didn't hear the question. What is your advice? He says, "What is your advice for someone thinking about doing a real estate deal in Detroit 
living in LA. Oh, okay. Okay. Can be I done. I got my thoughts on it, but I mean, like, but, you need to know the market. I mean, I have had success with a rental property out of state myself, but I have people, I have boots on the ground. So I have people that can monitor that property, tell me when I need to put money into that property, uh, manage the rents, things of that nature. But, you know, just, I don't think, once again, we're talking about the work you put in. So if you're a skilled investor, you know what you're doing. Okay. You could have some success doing that in a, in a more uh, real estate friendly neighborhood. But if you just want to put, throw money at it and, and then hopefully get a return, I'm not sure that'll work out for you. No, Al, I'm going to tell you, I have one of my millionaire mentors <clears throat> try to do some investing in Atlanta. He bought a 40 unit complex and when he closed on it, they fraudulently gave him the uh, paid off water bill. After he bought it, he found out that he, that he, that the water bill was $50,000. So we ended up losing a shirt on this one transaction. So it's really about the people. And my brother's telling you he has property out of town. I don't know all of his business, but I'm sure he the people that he deal that that he deals with, he trusts them 100 percent that what they're saying is facts. And they're not gonna go stab him in the back or do anything that lacks integrity. So until you have that relationship, Al, I wouldn't, good God, I wouldn't have not advised that yet. How about TB Williams? Do you think success is sometimes found by being unconventional? What are your thoughts on that, Chris? Yeah, I'm unconventional all the way. I when, when I teach real estate, Ronnie, there's two sides to real estate. You got conventional here and unconventional on this side. I never spell right. Unconventional. Two sides of the fence when you're doing business, TB Williams. This is the people that are going to go out, get a loan, get a loan, turn in tax returns, fill out our bank statements, have a FICO score, worry about your credit report, put a down payment. All of that is where this is conventional here. I live. This is where I live. You know what? I'm not saying you have to do that. You, you can do both, actually. Conventional, you're going to have a, a glass ceiling. The powers that be are only going to allow you to do so much by their rules. You got it? We live in this side because this side is where unlimited, unlimited, doing things unconventional. We don't worry about sucking up to the banks. I don't even have a, I don't even know what my credit score, I haven't checked it in over 10 years. We don't deal with down payments on houses or even turning in an application to a bank. So yeah, to answer your question, yes, I, this is where I live, you know, and I would advise all my clients to do the same. I have it for him as well. So it, I don't really, he didn't say it was specifically a real estate question. So let me give you this. From 2000 to 2005, I tried to be everything for everybody. When I started my business, I'm like, I'm going to sell to everybody. I'm going to take care of everybody. Everybody that had a, if you got a pulse, I can help you with a car deal. In 05, I started becoming unconventional and working with a niche of people, a niche. I put on a sport coat. I stopped looking for everybody and I start narrowing it down to the lowest common denominator, what I was looking for in a client. And it just exploded from there. So I don't know if you're talking specifically about real estate, but if you're talking about business in general, you definitely have a lane that you want to work in. Walmart and Amazon are the only people that can be everything to everybody. For me, I have to have a specific niche of people that I'm working with. You can't out Amazon, Amazon, right? You just can't do it. It took five years for me to realize that, bro. Like we're just, I mean, I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. It took five years for me to realize I couldn't be the cheapest. I wanted to be the cheapest. I was like, I don't have the overhead. I can, I'm going to get you a better deal. And after five years, I was like this. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't do anymore. And I realized, wow, Walmart, Sam Walton is the only one that wins this game, period. You can't, you can't compete. You can't compete. I mean, so you said, yeah, go ahead. if you have $400 billion, you can compete and you can hire Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. Yeah, sure. If that's, if that's who you are, <coughs> go ahead. You know, but for us normal people, you're going to get crushed if you're just trying to be everything to everybody. You've got to have a niche. 
you know, or it's so not really saying, unconventional. Is that, yeah, okay, so we're... We're speaking the down. same thing, different application. Yeah, I got you, I like that. So, yeah, you gotta have, remember, Ryan, we had a big talk about that. Who, who is your avatar? Who the hell you wanna do business with, you know? It ain't everybody. It ain't everybody. And it's okay. You, you, it's one of the most wonderful feelings you will have in your life as a business owner when you look at somebody and realize you're not my client. I now I don't even have to worry about selling to you. Now let's just be friends. You know, and most of the time they'll try and talk you into working with them. And you're like, I'm good, man. I'm good. That is a that is a mindset that, good God, it keeps me at peace. It does. You know, I I remember early once again the secrets are in the work. Earlier in my career, I would be upset when I couldn't convince someone why I was the best option. Later in my career, I have learned the secret that I can figure out in 20 minutes if you're right for me or not. I mean, and that's important. It's like, I want to help you, but I only want to help you if you're right for me. You know, if you're not right, a good fit for me, I, I am strong enough at this stage to go, I'm good. You know? I'm good. Daniel Tangpour says, I like the saying, every man needs to fail early. Yes, I didn't. I can't claim that one, brother. That's from Walt Disney. We can learn from their mistakes. Now the question's coming in. Thank you, Celeste. I appreciate the comment. Read it out, Ronnie. I always hear it. You said, Celeste Hill. She's always on here. She says, we are blessed to be the recipients of all this priceless content. Appreciate you taking time out. We know you're busy. Uh, it speaks a lot to your character. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thanks, Celeste. And thank you, Celeste. Healing through inspiration. Yeah, you got the hard copy. They ordered my book and I emailed them. It was in your spam. I told you it was in the spam, Healing. Good <laughs> place. You got me running around town. Al Gordon, you live in LA OC area. I don't know what that is. What type of real estate investing are you thinking about? I think they're asking. Oh, yeah, they're talking to each other. I'm on the verge of getting my first wholesale deal in about a week after getting into business in the past eight months. Okay, that's cool. Eight months is not bad. I know people have been doing this crap for three years and still grinding it out. Good job. Is wholesaling the best path to get started in real estate? That is from Sandrika Gilchrist. Is wholesaling the best path to get started in real estate? I guess that would be for me. Sandrika, hey, first, thank you for joining us today. Where you at? Where you at? I don't see your city. I'm not, I'm gonna start not answering until y'all put your city in. Sandrika, the good thing about wholesaling is I, I as I get in, as I matriculate, thanks to Hampton University, I'm getting into this teacher mode. And I'm, I've learned that the longer you do something for so long, it's time for you. You can only make so much money doing business. It's time for you to start pouring into your industry. So we got on the left side without money and on the right side with two ways to make money in real estate, without money or with money, Sandraka. The good thing about wholesaling is you have, you have to learn. It forces you. To learn how to make money without money. I happen to come up through this school over here. The problem is if you start out and you have money, it gives you the opportunity to lose that money. Doing deals like which is where we are here. I've got all the training that I did without money. Now I can sink that capital into making money and turning over for me. But when I started, I learned how to do it without money. How do you do that? If you make money without money, it means you are supplying other investors with products, which is what you're going to do with wholesaling. And it tells you that, yes, Sandrika, you get a check mark. You got to get check marks in life or arrow up. I always talk about arrow ups or arrows down. Once you start providing value for other investors like me, then it's going to tell you, you know what? I know how to create value in real estate as opposed to trying to buy value without the knowledge. So you're right. creating value for other investors with wholesaling without none of your money before you start spending it. And over here, one mistake, you're done. Wipe you out. You're done. Ryan, what you, what you got? I think that speaks exactly to what you're talking about. 
when we're both talking about the secrets are in the work. If you put the work in, you're going to make less money wholesaling, if I'm hearing you correctly. If I had $100,000 to invest today with all of Chris's skills, I could go make more money than just wholesaling one deal. However, there's so many lessons for you to learn wholesaling deal after deal after deal. Like Chris learned about the wood on his doors. After five years, he's like, I can probably just paint those. Nobody's going to care. <laughs> so when you go buy one, you can instantly walk to that house and go, okay, I'm ready to put my money into this. And I do not need to do those doors. All we got to do is paint them. But you're not going to get those secrets without all the work. Yeah. So, Sandrika, yes, I would say if you got some capital, you scare me because you have the opportunity to lose that capital. I don't want you to lose it. Al Gordon asks, do you think the recession only hits certain markets? Or he didn't say you, but do you think the recession only hits certain markets? So, I, you know, so there's two things to drive the stock market, guys. Fear and greed. That's it. I mean, there's no other way around it. You have fear and people start selling off and you have greed and people start buying everything. Those are the two things that control the market every for since the market has been created and a recession is nothing to worry about and it, you know as far as it hitting certain markets there's no denying that the recession hit flint michigan harder than it hit la county or orange county california i mean there's just no doubt about it but there's so many applications of why i mean uh, you know the steel industry the car industry i mean all of these different things uh, I would like you to flesh that question out a little bit more to know why you're asking it. You know, um, it, it's always going to hit different areas, different ways. But yeah. I think it is a blanket. You know, they they call it a rising tide will raise all boats. You know, but it also they all go down in different ways. So just because you're not seeing it, you know, like you're like in Flint, Michigan, and you're not seeing it. People that you might think are rich are seeing it as well because they used to invest in steel. They used to invest in Nestle, which is doing a lot of water in Michigan. And so they're not doing it anymore because the market is down. So, I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a tough question to answer without a little bit more information. Yeah, I think generally speaking, Ronnie, Al, I know this, you know, it's weird. I, I remember my mentor telling me that he loved recessions. He yes. loved recessions. I'm like, everything's on sale. Everything's on sale. <laughs> I didn't understand it. You know, as we, once again, Hampton University, as we matriculate, I'm like, Ryan, you and I have survived a recession. And I think I we should do a video on that. Several. Huh? I survived more than one. Like in 98, there was the tech bubble. That You guys are too young for that. But then I went through the last one. So it's been at least two, maybe three recessions I've been through. Wow. So, wow. Okay. Well, I can only speak for the one that I think, Ronnie, I think uh, we need to do a video on some of the secrets that we did to survive recessions. Absolutely. It's, yeah. But I, I, I'm here to tell you, I, I am looking forward to it. I, I can't believe I'm saying these words because when they were told to me, I'm like, dude, are you, why would you look forward to a recession? I mean, everybody's now I'm looking at it like, I am so prepared. Everything I is on sale. So Every dude, I am so prepared. And not only do we have cash flow coming in from all of our rental properties, which is recession proof, right? If they lose their job. I don't, you know, I don't care if I buy another house. We are so prepared to take advantage. We are capital heavy. You know, Al, I think that this is Ronnie, generally, generally speaking, recessions go are gonna hit across the board. I'm not talking about where the shipyard shut down or naval base shuts down. You're in trouble with that. You're in trouble with that. But in ge generally speaking, recessions, yes, they hit across the board and you can get paid. Al, I will share this with you, too. In 98, when we invented this business, we sat down at a round table and the first thing we discussed was how do we make it recession proof? And the answer right. we came up with was we are not going to hold overhead. a lot of overhead because it consumes money. And when the market changes, your million dollars of cars that you own tomorrow are worth 700,000. And let's so, do a whole video on that, Ronnie. We're going to do a whole a, video on that one. That's a yeah. good question, man. It's a that's good, a good question. We'll, we'll segment on that one for next week, Ronnie, or week after that. We'll talk about that recession stuff. Lena Pena, is it possible to work a 95 job and still get in wholesale? And we just covered that. My brother and I full time. But yes, subject two is going to be a little slower, but it's going to create wealth. Don't forget, wholesaling does not create wealth. It's just a job. 
You're going to stay broke doing wholesaling, I promise you. TB Williams has a question. He goes, so guys, is now the time to stack cash or hold assets due to the re recession? So that is a very complex question. And what I would tell you is work with a financial advisor. Like for me in my particular situation, like Chris said, I am waiting for the next recession because I want to be in position to buy things. And so right now I'm looking at staying cash positive, cash flow positive, not incurring a lot more debt uh, over the next two to five years. Uh, that debt meaning payments that are going to be coming out of my account. So, but TB, you probably need to talk to an accountant about that, not an accountant, a financial planner to look at your entire portfolio and what your spectrum looks like so that you can make a, an educated decision on, on what you're going to do. Yeah. TB, once again, I mean, there, I would, man, as I was getting dressed this morning, I'm like, I'm no better or worse, good or bad than anybody. I just have a few tools in my toolbox that have just skyrocketed me. And I'm here to tell you, having access to capital is one of my biggest secrets. I have, I mean, one of my skills, one of my, I've learned it, superpowers is to be able to raise capital, you know, and it has nothing to do with a bank. And yes, I think it is with stack cash. Yeah, that's going to be, I, I don't know. I mean, everybody's different. I don't know what your bills are. We can, yeah, that, that, hold on. I don't necessarily think holding on to cash is always the best idea, but having access to it for me, in my opinion, you know, and Ronnie has different ways that his business runs. When real estate goes on sale, it's just like chicken. We're going to be, oh my goodness, we're going to be out there buying up as much as possible. Yeah. The problem That's with it. stacking a lot of cash is cash finds emergencies to go to. So, you know, without a plan. That's why I said talk to a planner. You know, like if your goal, I do the same thing for my business. I try to keep some aspect of cash, but that cash is allocated to specific things that I want to do in my business. So you know where it's going. Yeah, just piling it up with no plan. I guarantee you where that's going to go. It's going to that cash in your pocket will find an emergency to go to every time. Myron Campbell, last one that I'm going glass. I want to make sure I give you the link to the text messaging, text, text message marketing. I can't say that text message marketing masterclass tonight, nine o'clock with Eddie. I'm going to put the link on that if you want to join us tonight. Probate list. Excuse me. Probate list, I'm um, up and down on that list. Probate list for people that are we're buying houses from dead people. They're not going to call you immediately, but you're going to have to follow up with them probably every two months. And you're going to get maybe three to four calls and you're going to have to go out and you have to be real touch and feely. But yes, Myron, you got to stay on top of it. I wouldn't go too far back more than nine months after that. You're just being a pest from my experience. Good advice. Last thing is uh, you need you need quicker lead sources. You need to join us tonight on the text message marketing masterclass, bro. That's tonight. I'll put the link in the description as soon as, as, soon as I get time. But Ronnie, please give us some thumbs up for our optimization. Give us some likes, class, please. What do I got to pay to get some likes? I only got nine today. I'm not, I'm not working hard enough. We're out here. We're pouring into you. We're taking time out of our days to give you the wisdom that we have learned. I mean, put us together, Ronnie. What thirty years of staying in business? Yeah, man. And my my closing one thing: ninety for ninety five percent of our life comes from the programs that were set in our brains the first seven years we were alive. Ninety five percent of our brain is just working on programs. The other five percent is consciousness and what you actually apply to creativity every day. So. If you think about that, if you can just get enough programs in your brain, the mundane work that you're doing all the time, that will help propel you to areas of success that you've never realized before. But it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. The work. Do you think most, the majority of us are spoiled with this new internet, mobile phone, everything's happening right now? It's so now. crazy, man. Like none of my business works off of that, right? I just, I, by the way, I just got a deal off of YouTube that just worked out for the first time ever. And I wasn't even advertising it, but I do zero off the phone. So I don't even know what capacity I have to excel in that arena. So I'm going to be tuning into your class to check it out.
I'm just so far removed from that. But to answer your question, just because like you said, I hate technology. It's like for me, I'm like, I'm, I don't do business that way. But you know what, man, we got to start looking at it because it's just a growing industry and we're going to get left behind. I'm talking about, well, I'm, I'm more or less thinking about our society that we want stuff now. And I keep hearing you talking about the work. Well, yeah, everybody wants stuff now. You're talking about they want stuff now without the work. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what well, they are. Well, as much as we see a click of a button getting paid, you can do X, Y, Z in 30 days. You're going to get X amount of dollars, you know, and it's kind of like we live in a click button society. We have lost the work ethic, perhaps. Why do you think that is? I mean, Chris, that that yes, I get a phone call every week, man. Hey, Ronnie, do you need a hundred thousand dollars? We got the easiest way for you to get a twenty percent return on it in like ten days, and I'm like, wow. And so I think to myself, you, we talked about conventional and unconventional, right? So mm -hmm. everybody is running to the get rich quick stuff. You that's where you see all the fish just flounder the 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 salmon that are swimming up the stream. I want to be the bear on the other side of that waiting. You know, I want to be unconventionally working. Gotcha. You can easily find a get rich quick schemes. You that they're everywhere. If you if you class think about all the stuff that people approach you with, I'm going to put some money in your pocket. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. That I'm done. As soon as they say it's going to be easy, I'm like I have no interest in it. I want to know that it's super hard, difficult, huge payout in the end. And then that excite. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be the only one doing it. <laughs> so yes, man, we are a society of get rich quick, push a button, get paid. It will never work, guys. It it, nope. it won't work. The things that are work are the secrets hidden in the work. Remember like that. The, Remember. Uh, that. Yeah, the secrets are you got to go dig. I was telling you, Ronnie, if I could just take a snapshot of the last 15 years of my life, I've dug a hole. 10 stories down in the ground to insulate myself against all this other stuff. You know, it's like noise. <laughs> it's noise. They see you now. They, they're like, Ronnie, dude, you're, I mean, you're a car dealer. You buy and sell cars every day. I mean, damn, I want to do it too. They don't know this big bag of stuff that you carry, you've done over the last 20 years. The guy that I had a guy last week, he goes, man, I just can't sell as many cars as you. I'm just not as successful as you. You just this is easy for you. I'm like, yeah, I just started doing it two weeks ago. It's, it's easy. <laughs> you forget what what makes me feel successful isn't what people think. Here's what makes me feel successful: that everything I do feels easy to me. Everything you do feels what easy to me. At this twenty years of doing this, yep. Yeah, Making cold calls, knocking on doors, saying hi to people I don't know. All of that is just second nature to me. When I was a wide receiver playing football, running a five-yard out, if you if anybody in the class knows football, running a five-yard out eventually felt super easy to me. First time I ran it, I tripped and fell down. You know, so yeah, man, that that's that makes me feel successful is when I when everybody like the, the year's closing out and people are counting money and they're paying tax stuff off. And they're like, man, we're at zero again. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, let's go to work. It's going to be easy. It's going to be because I'm good. I'm going to do the work, man. So tell me about, never let you go. Tell me about, I remember the culture that I'm used to from not from myself, but from society. Everybody loves Fridays and hates Mondays. Yes. I just, I remember being in when I first started the real estate. I'm like, man, I, I freaking love Mondays. Because the banks are closed on the weekend, no loans are closing. I'm like, I hate Fridays because can't close no deals on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm the same way, dude. Everybody's like, I see the memes on Facebook. They're like, oh, Lord, Monday's tomorrow. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm going to new opportunities to make money start at 8 a.m. for me. Like, That's cool. on the weekend, I'm just relaxing. So it's just a mindset shit. Anybody can do it. That's a, If you heard Chris earlier in this video... I dropped out of college. I got eyes. I didn't do enough to get an F. And I'm not saying I'm all that. All I'm saying is I'm still doing business 30 years later. So I'm not all a unicorn. Right. I'm not a unicorn. All right. Class, subscribe to my channel, my brother's channel. Thank you for joining us. The last thing I want to leave you with is don't be scared of the work.
this country is built on people working. I don't know my ancestors. I, I don't have a clear direction of our ancestors, but I'm pretty sure somewhere in the Lincoln there, we had slaves in our ancestors and they worked no doubt deathly hard. And if they did what, what they did to get us here, get me and my, get me here, my brother here, why can't we do a little bit of work to continue on what our ancestors built? I think that's one thing we're lacking too. Ryan. We don't have the strength of our ancestors. We don't know who they are to push us forward on thinking, you know, I was reading Booker T. Washington's book. He was saying how he can call upon the strength of his ancestors. Like we, you and I get to call on dad. You remember dad getting up at five in the morning, dude? All the time, every day. Good. He had the best work ethic ever. <laughs> so we get to, oh, I gotta, I gotta show your, your thing here. We get to, uh, Call on dad's strength, Ronnie. You know, I'm, when I'm up at four o'clock, I'm like, I know dad's up. Every time I get up, I'm like, I know my dad's up already. Yep. Every day. <laughs> Every day. He's up. <laughs> All right. Till next time, I want to leave you with one line. My new line is you're only one lead away from your next house. You're only one lead away from your next house. And my line is I already believe in you. I just really need you to believe in yourself. I, you don't need to convince me. Once you can look in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth and believe in yourself, you're going to win. Yeah. Okay. Love you, my brother. Love you too, man. Have a I'll good day. Tonight tonight. At the master, yeah. See, at the master class tonight, guys, go ahead and sign up for the master class. I'll put it in, in, the, in the description below. Peace. Peace out.